So just uh, two brief thoughts for this evening, if, uh, if I may. Uh, the first one, um, I remember when I was in a secondary school once, this, this question came up numerous times, the students would ask me, they would say, Father, do you know the way like you're a priest in that? And I'd say, yeah, I'm fairly familiar with it. Um, they'd say, look, I mean, are you, can you like, do you know, can you, can you, do you know what I mean? And I'd say, no, I've, I've no idea at all what you're talking about. Can, can you like, do you know, can you drink? I'd say, um, you mean like alcohol? Yeah, like, you know, what are you going to do? What do you do in the weekends? What do you do for fun? Are you allowed to drink? I said, well, yeah, I mean, I, I can. It's not the hardest process, really. Uh, but, I mean, I can. I can take it or leave it. I don't really care. Uh, I, and then, how often do you go drinking, Father? I said, well, I'd say to be once, I'd have probably one beer once every six weeks, I'd say. About that, in or around, more or less. And then their jaws would drop. I'd say, Father, but do you have any fun at all? And I'd say, lads, my life is full of nothing but fun. Every day is full of such joy and rejoicing and, and uh, so many gifts, so many gifts from God, so many gifts from, from and through people. My life is absolutely, absolutely full of joy. They'd say, but Father, can you, can you smoke like? <laughs> I'd say, lads, where's this line of questioning going? Like, what do we think? makes us happy. They'd say, well, like, do you know, well, what, what do we say so far? Drinking and smoking and then, you know what I mean? Like, there's the, you know what I mean? The, you know, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> do you mean girls? Is it? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> um, okay. That, that whole area of things, no, that I don't uh, associate with. Um, but then far, like, do you know what I mean? How can you be happy? And on one hand, it's kind of comical. On the other hand, it's so sad, <laughs> so desperately sad, that they would see this as the epitome of joy. Drinking, smoking, and ladies. That's, that's, sorry, is that it, lads? Is that, is that it? Is that all you got? Is that all I'm missing, is it? Like, <laughs> keep it. Is that, it? Is, 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 that the, is that the best that we can offer? Is that as good as it gets? Because if that's it, then life really is awful. To quote that French philosopher that we, oh yeah, it's everything. Um, so if that's as good as life gets, then jeepers, why bother? Like if that, that's, that's really empty. So we will often be misunderstood and the treasures and the joy of our faith will often be misunderstood. Like the end of uh, today's reading in Corinthians, uh, we must be ready for blame or for praise, taken for imposters when we're genuine. You know, people, when you say like to someone, I'll pray for you, I don't need your prayers, I don't need your judgment. I, I wasn't judging you. I'm just saying, I'll, do you want God's help? Because I think I want God's help for me. Do you want God's help for you? I'll ask, I, you know, I'm not, I'm being genuine here. Like I'm not, I'm not imposing my faith on you. I'm just asking God to help you. What's, um, We'll be taken for obscure yet famous, taken to be dying when we are alive. You guys fast. Are you like, are you like a cult? No, no, we're not, no. Um, Catholic Church actually fasts at least twice a year. Do you know? Do we? Yeah, we, we, we do actually, yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, and this gives us life. For us to kind of recognize that, that these things that, that, that seem like a death in the world actually are life-giving. Because I learned to renounce my own will. If I'm a slave to my own will, I actually become addicted to practically anything. You can get addicted to your phone or alcohol or relationships or the internet, whatever it may be. So through fasting, yes, I, I, I learned to renounce my own will. So people might consider that like a death, but it's, it gives life. It actually sets us free, stops us from being so self-centered and so superficial. Rumoured to be executed before we were sent sentenced. That doesn't happen very often, I suppose, uh, these days, hopefully. Uh, thought to be most miserable when we are always rejoicing. Uh, there's a good one. Thought to be most miserable when we are always rejoicing. So you guys live in a house where you, you pray, like, every day, is it? Yeah, must be really hard. 
<laughs> not, not a bit. So what's, what's hard about our life? Our life here, we live in a little bit of paradise. There's nothing hard about our life at all. Uh, the challenges that we face, difficult don't, though they may be, are nothing in comparison to a life without Christ. My goodness. A life without the Lord, that's... Then you're just you're boxing with one hand. Here, like, we, we yes, we have, we, have, we have struggles, yeah, but, like, with the grace of God there, there it, it, it's a completely different battle altogether. With the Lord at our side, the Lord within us, that's, that's a different kind of a fight because out there, if you're fighting on your own and you're just surrounded by, by oppression and darkness and people who don't understand our faith, that's, that's hard. They have it far, far harder than we do. So we're taken for, for being miserable because we pray every day. But we're always rejoicing because the Lord sets us free. And the Lord sets free is free indeed. We're taken for paupers, though we make others rich. Interesting little detail there. So we're taken to be poor, but we make others rich. Now, obviously, that means that we have something, something to give ourselves, which is our faith, the greatest treasure we have, relationship with Jesus Christ. And this we can witness to. We can give an example of to others. And that brings us to the second point I wanted to make this evening. I was thinking today about, about friendship. Over the weekend, we had a, a few of our uh, alumni, so previous community members, come visit. And it was just really interesting and important for me anyway to see the effect that good friendship has. And I was thinking about just today now, what is it that makes good friendship? What is it that makes a friendship, a sure, a friendship wholesome? Uh, we read in Ecclesiastes, you know, he who finds a friend finds a treasure. So like, what would be key characteristics of friendship? That, that make this friendship, that you could use to kind of qualify this friendship as, as a good one. And the one that really struck me, and that maybe that there are others, but this is just one thought for, for today. Uh, what really struck me, is when I think about myself like, and, and good friends I have, good friends call me to more, or good friends kind of stir up within me a desire to be more, a desire to be better. Like they're a good example for me. You know, when I see, like, when, when you're around a, a good friend, you just, you feel a desire to be, to be better, to be holier, to be more giving, less selfish. You know, they're actually, they're a good, virtuous example to you. A bad friend, if you can even use the word friend, would be someone who's more likely to get you in trouble. Go on, you'll have one more, show what arm. You know what I mean? That kind of, that's, that kind of, you wouldn't really call it a friendship, they're an acquaintance, they're trying to lead you down the, the, the wrong road. That's, they may, and they may even know you well. They may have visited your home. They may know all of your girlfriends and where you went to college and you may have gone to school with them for years. So they may know a lot about you. But you might, I wouldn't necessarily consider them, just because they know you, might, I wouldn't necessarily consider them friends. I think a true friend, in, in the deepest sense of the word, a true friend will call you to more. Which, and and not, not in a preaching way. But just by being with them, by, by living with them, you, you feel a desire to be, to be more, to be better. To, and again, not, not in, a, in a comparison kind of way. I'm trying to qualify this. So not in a way that, oh, they're so holy, I'm so useless, I should be better. No. But when I see how, how they behave and how they act, uh, I want to be all that I can be as well. And this person helps me to see myself for who I am in, in the grace of God and leads by example. I remember um, there was a Dominican priest and uh, he was telling me about this experience he had where he was, they, they pray in choir. So the, the benches on this side of the chapel face the benches on that side of the chapel and then you have your reader there in the middle. So as you're praying, then you're, you're facing across so you can see the, the brothers on the other side. So he was there standing with his bravery and every now and again, he just kind of peek up. Or just one particular lad. The Lord has made known his salvation to the nations. And he'd peek away. And he was always struck by how this other brother prayed. And said, Genie, if I could just pray like him, he just, you know, like he's just really deep prayer. You can really, he's connecting, like he's connecting with the Lord. You can see there's something going on there. There's like a communication between his heart and the heart of the Lord. And uh, a couple of weeks passed. Then this other brother came to priest A. 
and said to him, look, um, I've been meaning to tell you this now for the last couple of weeks, but I've always been inspired by how you pray. And it's always kind of, you know, spurred me on to, to pray more myself. And the first guy was dumbfounded. because I like, well, you were inspiring me, actually. And now here it is. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll give you a little crash course later. Um, but just how, how good friends, good brothers, you know, we, we, we should be an example to each other uh, of virtue and true friendship, just like anything true should lead us to God. True friendship should lead us to God, should lead us to be the best ver version of ourselves. So friendship that leads us to rebellion, friendship that leads us to impurity, friendship that leads us to uh, irresponsible decisions or behavior or actions, is not true friendship because it doesn't lead us to God. On the other hand, positively said, friendship that leads us to God. So these kind of relationships that we have that lead us to God, they are an absolute treasure. He who finds a friend finds a treasure. We may be taken for paupers. We may be taken for miserable when we are actually the wealthiest and most joyful people there are if we have the Lord because he who has the Lord lacks no blessing, lacks nothing, lacks nothing. So, yeah, we will be misunderstood by the world, but that's not really important. Our role here is not to be understood by the world. Our role is to build up the kingdom of God. And so we ask the good Lord today to remove any fear in our hearts of trying to appease the world or kind of be one with the world because we, we can't. We're called to be one with the Lord. And if some will understand that, some will applaud that, some won't understand it, some will deride us. But we stay going our way, united with the Lord for the conversion of our own souls for the conversion of the world around us. And we do so with true friends at our sides. Amen.